Hi, good morning. My name is Dr. Stein Heckert. Uh, this morning I'll be doing a presentation at the Leaders Angle at the University of Stellenbosch Business School on a topic known as thinking differently about business. It's a challenge that I'm posing to business leaders in 2013. And amongst others, we look at the environment, the way in which it has changed, and asking critical questions where we as businesses are actually embracing those changes and starting to look at the environment differently. My presentation follows here after. Today we'll be talking about thinking differently about business. Uh, more specifically, thinking differently about the business environment. It's a challenge that I pose to business leaders, people like yourself, for 2013 and hopefully beyond. Now normally when I challenge people with something like this or anything else, people's first reaction is normally, what is wrong with the way in which we're doing things at the moment? Wh why do we need to change? Why must we think about things differently? Is there something wrong in the way in which we're thinking at the moment? You're not happy with the way in which we're thinking? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying you're doing anything wrong. But I will say this. As a society, as an international society, we are faced with a number of societal challenges that we seemingly just cannot solve. Well, we don't seem to be able to solve them. Poverty. Unemployment. So no, I'm not saying that you're doing anything wrong in terms of your thinking, but I am saying this. The challenge I'm putting in front of you this morning is one that you are very much aware of. And that is that as business leaders, we have the same problems decade in, decade out, and we're not getting any closer to a solution. I would like to think that to start thinking about the environment differently might be a step closer to possible solutions. I want to kick off this morning by asking you to play a little game with me, please. You have 30 seconds. Draw me a picture of Africa. Go, you have 30 seconds. Okay, all right, here we go. What do I have? Emotion, disappointment, sadness, maybe expectations of a continent that's not living up to it. This is what I have. I just asked you to draw me a picture of Africa. What do I have? A picture of Africa. A map. That's what it looks like. Pretty good one, this. This is what this person saw when I asked him to draw me a picture of Africa. I think this one is confused. <laughs> I didn't say draw me a picture of the moon. <laughs> Not sure what this is. Probably things going right, things going wrong. Question marks here on the South African side. Are we going to make act as the gateway to Africa? Whatever. Something else going on in this person's mind. What's the point? The point is... Different people see different things and see things differently. In academic terms, ladies and gentlemen, the reason for that <coughs> is we view things, the so-called outside world or the so-called ontological reality, we view it through a perceptual filter. So when you view something, there's a large part of what you're seeing that is based on how you are looking at that specific reality. There's learned people out there, Thompson and Strickland specifically, that gives us a sequence of business activities. And they say that when you want to plan, you have to have a starting point. And typically that starting point is we scan the environment. In English, we are looking at something, at the environment. What we see is based on how we're viewing it, and that then becomes your picture of the environment. So typically when you as business leaders, when you do strategy planning, either in your business or as a consultant, you'll start somewhere and you'll draw a picture up on the board that normally looks something like that. I'm seeing the environment and based on how I'm seeing it, I draw a picture. So this becomes what we call a mental conceptualization of the environment. This is now what it looks like. When I scan, Thompson and Strickland tells us that primarily I need to gather information. From the information, I plan certain scenarios, possible futures, maybe this is what's going to happen. On the basis of these scenarios, normally there's one that's got the highest likelihood of materializing. And then I choose a strategy and I implement to get some sort of business performance. Successful, less successful, more successful. I want you to keep that in your mind as we go through this morning. Because what's important here, ladies and gentlemen, is the starting point. 
what I see impacts on how I think. So if you are seeing something different, if I'm seeing Africa as a continent of opportunity, and you're seeing Africa as a continent of disappointment, the way in which you think will be different from mine. Hence, your strategy will be different. When we view the environment, are we seeing the environment as what it really is? So around it, we have the so-called competitive environment or the market environment. And normally those contain components which are spatially and conceptually closer to the business. And, and what that uh, indicates is that as a business, you have some level of control over that or influence really. And out there in the so-called market environment is the very well-known uh, categorization according to a pestle. So I have politics, economy, legislation, technology, social trend changes. But they far out, meaning that as a business, I can't really influence it. I can't really control it. I can't really change that. And this is the first thing I want to ask you, or I want to challenge you with. I'm coming forth and saying that a pestle categorization, a taxonomic categorization of the environment, as this one, is inadequate. If you think that a customer is still stuck in the competitive environment, in the market environment, where you as a business can have levels of influence, control, make them do what you want them to do, you are wrong. Many a times when you go and you want to buy a pair of Nikes, they don't have your size. You know why? The Fushini group will order 10 containers, but they will only get five. Why? Because the supplier, ladies and gentlemen, sits in the contextual environment. It does not <laughs> sit in the market environment. I want to show you three photos. These are photos that was taken by Colgate to advertise their dental floss. I want you to have a look. Tell me what you see. Just have a look. Don't say anything yet. Right. What do you see? Okay. Right. Obviously. What else did you see? Okay. There's a hand on the left shoulder on the second picture, in other words. It's a phantom hand. Can you see that? What do you see in that picture that's different? Six fingers. And the last one, what do you see there? No ear. Now, if, if that was the environment, I would have seen that. And my thinking about this environment would have been primarily based on that. And my strategy would have been based on that. The second interesting thing is now that somebody has told me that, oh, the guy hasn't got an ear, it's impossible for me to look at that picture without seeing that there is no ear. <laughs> when we draw the environment like this, it's impossible for us to unsee it like that. Some of the other challenges that I'd like to put forward in terms of the environment. You see those gray sections there. It's known as a system complexus. It's where two systems or components in the environment cross over one another, and there's certain pieces of information that is stuck there. Uh, bits of information that lies in that overlap that you cannot obtain by looking at the component in isolation. Which means, when I scan the environment, I shouldn't be drawing it as separate little systems, because then that's how I scan it. And there's powerful bits of information in that overlap. So for me to think more completely about the environment and make more appropriate strategy selections, I need to get as a complete basket of information as possible. This uh, is work that was done by a gentleman by the name of Voros, uh, Slaughter, Chu, Beck, Cohen, and Wilbur. They're philosophers and environmental scanners. And what they've done is they've developed this matrix. And the matrix has got four quadrants, as you can see there, and 11 levels. These levels are levels of evolvement or evolution, if you want to call it that. The top one here, your left-hand side, that represents the self and the consciousness. That's where all these perceptual filters lie. They've categorized them, and they've given them color codes according to spiral dynamics. And down here, this is your local community, schools, churches, mosques, whatever. This is your culture, your immediate environment. And they also have a level of involvement. Over here we have the so-called, which I uh, mentioned earlier, the, the pestle, your largest social system. They also have a level of involvement. And then up there we have people behavior. The involvement, in simple terms, happens like this. In the beginning, in the initial stages, it's all about you. 
you acquire, you build yourself, you make sure you survive, or you can provide. You, it's all about you. And then on a certain level, once you've, let's say, you've arrived, you're comfortable with yourself, your immediate environment, uh, whether that's financial ability or whatever you're comfortable, then you start looking at sharing. You start caring about your neighbors, about the immediate community. You start caring about poverty. You get involved in projects. You motivate your company to start doing a social responsibility. The red flag, however, unfortunately, is that typically when you find yourself on a level seven, you scan, you scan behavior, you scan larger systems here, and you scan immediate community. You do what they call cross-level analysis. Automatically, because you are on level seven, you will look towards level seven in your community. And you will look towards level seven in your social system. Let's talk farm strikes. Let's make it practical. And uh, I'm generalizing a little bit, so uh, please bear with me. It's really just for purposes of explanation. I'm not choosing size. I'm trying to make a point here. If the farmer has arrived, and the farmer is on level eight or nine, the farmer takes very good care of his workers, give them housing, employ as many people as possible, try to do good, become involved in the community, start running teaching and training programs at the school, get involved. But the laborer, the worker, is on level three. Instinctual, fight or flight, survival. Which means that their primary concern when they look at the environment is archaic, archais, survival. That's what's important to them. It is almost impossible for them to see the good that the farmer is doing because they are not scanning level six and seven. And we do exactly the same as business leaders. We tend to do the same. We scan the environment. And because we are on a level seven or eight, we have this horrible tendency of saying, I know what the market wants. This is what they want. And the minute you say that, it's normally what you believe you're seeing here. Because you're on that level. Maybe your market is over there. Maybe your market is over there. Kids, new age, computers. What am I doing this morning? I'm coming to you and I'm saying to you, there are challenges and we're seemingly not overcoming them. And I'm not expecting you as businesses to get involved on a high level on all these social challenges that we have. But I do have an expectation of you to think innovatively about your businesses because you need to keep your doors open. You need to understand the environment because the better you understand the environment, the more appropriate your strategy selection would be. The higher chance you have of sustaining your competitive edge, in other words, of keeping your doors open. The economy isn't going to turn tomorrow. Unemployment isn't going to turn tomorrow. Political stability isn't going to come back tomorrow to parts of northern Africa, other parts of Africa, to the Middle East. It's going to return tomorrow. You need to start managing your business within the environment as what it really is. And the starting point is understanding it better. Yeah, very quickly, I've split it into three bands. Internal, we haven't really spoken internal today. There's no time for that. But just look at transactional and contextual. And all I'm saying is, transactionally, the components that lie here, you're going to be more proactive, engage with them, get married to them, build a barrier of entry, make sure nobody else comes in and takes some of your cake. Contextually, you can only be flexible and only adapt. And the trick is not about giving the customer what they want anymore. The trick is about giving the customer what they want all the time. So, away from forecasting, away from forward planning, into flexibility so that when they want whatever they want, bang, I can give it to them. I use the customer as an example because it's the most appropriate in terms of business. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. I really, I just uh, thought I'll bring you some of these thoughts on viewing the environment differently in the hope that we can get closer to solutions, not necessarily to societal problems, but in terms of our own strategies in our company so that we can keep our doors open. Look at the environment. Understanding the environment better will most likely lead to better strategy selection, better business performance, and your ability to sustain your competitive edge. Thank you very much. Questions?